So in this video, I'm going to be going over how to create the hue masks. Um, so what do I mean by a hue mask? Uh, in the last video, I showed you guys how to create um, the target matrix, which is really just all of our uh, label classifications, but everything is stacked in channels. So everything's just grayscale. So how do we go from these five grayscale uh, channel images into something that represents color that we could just kind of draw in a single RGB image. Okay, that's what we're going to be going over uh, how to create. Um, and the main underlying principle is that what we'll do is we'll operate within a color channel called HSV. So in the same way that we can create a, represent an image in RGB, we can also represent it in hue, saturation, and value. And so just to show you guys really quickly, HSV, the hue, is all the possible colors that it can take on. And then we have the saturation, which the saturation at zero is white. And then the maximum at 255 is, is the full color, the full hue coming out. And the same thing with value. Um, value at zero will be black. And then maximum value at 255 just lets all that color come through. Um, so really what we want to do is just control the hue. We can set saturation and value both to 255. Um, so let me actually show you guys how to do that. Uh, let's start by going up here and we can copy and paste. Again, we're going to be doing some very similar stuff here. And we're going to copy and paste this portion. So we're just really going to start reading in our images again. But instead, we're going to read in an RGB image. We're not going to read it in as grayscale. So we'll do all of that. Um, and we actually want to create a, a color image. So our function this time should return uh, a color image, which is going to be RGB. All right, so I'm going to call that in color. And we'll create a function called draw multi masks. And we'll take that image and a shape dick. And I guess down here, so within Jupyter, you have this like built in function called display. So I can take uh, so in color is really just an array. Um, I can say image dot from array. Maybe <laughs> in color. So we'll take that array, turn it into a pillow image and display it. And then I'm also going to say, oh, uh, another thing here. I want to make sure that I enumerate this. So I'm going to say for I. And the reason I'm doing this is because I only I want to see I want to see a couple images. Previously, I've been just looking at like the first image in all of these. Um, I want to see a couple of images because now we're going to be able to create um, really nice colored images for really every single annotation image pair that we have. So if I is equal to four, we would break out of this. So let's actually create the function that's going to be doing all this. And uh, again, this function is going to be very similar to a lot of the things that we did before, but it's going to be called def draw, draw multi masks. And it's going to take an image and a shape deck. And now we're actually going to, uh, we're going to create a blank image again, like we have been, but this blank image is going to have a data type of uh, NumPy UN8, okay? Because it's an RGB image. Um, it's not really, uh, so previously it was float32 because we kind of needed that for TensorFlow, but now, now that it's RGB, we can just use unsigned integer eight. Um, so again, and this is gonna be very, very similar to what we did, and we could probably copy and paste uh, we want we want the channels, we want the class, uh, we want the polygon label to dict, and hmm, I wonder. Nah, yeah, let's just copy that. I don't want to copy too much. Okay, cool. So 
let me see. That looks good. So now I can start to iterate over a lot of this. So for I and label in enumerate of labels, I'm going to say, again, if label is in class. So what I'm doing is I'm enumerating over my annotation again, but all I want to do is draw it this time. Um, and I don't need to worry about background anymore because I really just want, like, who cares about background? We, we already knew background was created when we made all this black. We're only interested in these first four classes, right? So if your label is in your class, you would say CB2 fill poly. And we want to put on our blank. And again, we're going to go label to poly of label. Should look very familiar. And let's see. So instead, like previously, we would always just put 255 here because it's a single channel image. But now blank is actually, um, it's going to be the same shape of m.shape. And image was RGB. Well, technically, so when you read in an image with OpenCV, it will actually order the dimensions in BGR. Just so if you didn't already know that, like that's a heads up. Uh, image, image is actually in BGR order, but we really only care about the shape, right? We, we know that it has three color channels. So what we want to do is say hues of label 255, 255. So what are we doing here? Um, if you go up here, you notice that we had this hues dictionary that we created in the last video. And for each uh, label, we have a hue value. So if I want, what did I say? Circle was blue, right? So, or like a, I guess a aqua kind of color, that's 90, right? So right here, a hue of 90, that means my circle is gonna be this blue and the triangle is gonna be green, star is gonna be uh, yellow at 30 and then square is red at zero, all right? So those are all the hue pairs that are being created um, from HSV. So these these correspond. And we want to create, and remember it's hue, saturation, value. So we want saturation and value to be equal to 255. So what I'm doing is I'm really taking a, it's not really RGB, it's actually HSV. It just so happens that it has three, three channels. So the hue, the only thing I'm changing is the hue based on the label, all right? And then we're just going to draw that in. So we just created an HSV image. So how do we get that? And because normally when you render graphics, you need them to be in RGB. So what you could do is CV2. And you, this is how you do a color conversion. It's CV2, CVT color. And you can go from blank. And you can create color. It's a constant. It's called like color. Um, HSV, it's really hard to remember sometimes. HSV to RGB. So I'm going to go from, I just filled in hue saturation value on this blank image. Now I want to take that image and convert it to RGB and then return that image. Okay. So let me see if I can run this. That looks good. And yep, that looks good. So, uh, and if you look, let me see if I can pull this up really quick. If I go into my images, you'll see that I've got zero, it's this guy, star, right? So that's those, that's the first um, four images, right? Or maybe it's five. And that looks really good. So this is a way that you can check to make sure that your annotations got created properly. So what you might wanna do is set this like you might just want to print all of these as long as the notebook doesn't like run out of memory um, and you can just print if you want to switch this you can go to cell current output toggle scrolling and you can just look and eyeball all of these and make sure that okay do my annotations match up with these colors um, and they, they really should if they don't then you messed up one of your annotation files 
Um, but this is how you would check like, oh yes, these are circles, they're blue. And you can check for all the different images. Um, and this is how I actually create the overlay and what and how I go from a you know multi like a five channel matrix and convert to a single um, RGB image okay um, so yeah hopefully that makes sense it's pretty cool this is how the actual mask is created in the in the github repository and hopefully that helps you if that was something you were trying to create and you can certainly go through and look through every single image in your directory and make sure your annotations have been created properly. All right. So in the next video, I'm going to be talking about how to do uh, custom image augmentation with uh, polygons. Okay. Cause that gets a little tricky too. <laughs> um, but image augmentation is an important step when we start to build out uh, neural networks and we want to make them a little more robust to things like blur and, we can artificially inflate our data size and lots of good stuff. So I'll see you guys in the next video.